time out of your day to come and join our very first school family community partnership team building meeting. Um, we're going to kind of go through what this program entails to see if this of these activities um, that we're going to be doing, we're going to also present to the school site council because we're not the school site council, we're going to work with the school site council on some activities that will help improve the relationships that go on at school between the community, the parents, and the students. And that's what this is all about, it's about bringing that up. And that's, I think, one of the main issues that we have at this school is we have parents that come and volunteer, but it's always like the same parents. We don't really have a lot of activities for parents to get involved. This vision came with Ms. Newbert, 2014. And I think it also was added with Ms. Williams back. And she was here for three years, so 2011. So it hasn't really changed much, and our clientele has changed drastically. So I'm thinking that um, we need to come up with some things that we need to either add to Ms. Newbert's vision to make it a school-wide vision that fits the needs of our kids and also, you know, getting input from other people who are also affected by this vision too, you know, parents, PTA, community members. So is there anything, and I could talk with Ms. Newbert when we go to our school site council, is there anything that you would like to add um, to the vision that we currently have or pull from the vision that I show is um, everyone all students, every student, will become proficient and advanced. Because not all students are going to get there. So, what problem I have, oh sorry Stephen, what problem I have with it is without excuse, without, without exceptions, excuses, yeah. because and we are a school mm -hmm. that provides a lot of excuses and a lot of exceptions. Yeah. Right? We do, we do provide a lot of excuses for our kids. So I, that, I think that bugs me the most, like that, I think it's, Maybe not necessarily an untrue statement, but maybe it's not an accurate statement of where they are today. Because as a parent of, of yeah. you know, a child who's had some challenges, both physically, mm -hmm. well, more mentally, mm -hmm. and uh, whether it was physical, um, he's uh, struggling. Uh, some things um, he can't help, but in our house, uh, find that's that's not an excuse. That's like a condition, that's your reality, so you have to figure out how to operate in that reality. It doesn't become someone else's problem. Like maybe not proficient, but I do think every kid should make growth. Right. Yeah, like we can't growth. say, like you said, these kids come with these problems and they're allowed to just sit there and do nothing. Every student does have to make growth. So maybe proficient is not what they can reach, but yeah. there should, should be, be growth. Either, but like you're basing every kid's standards based on what they where they're at, their level. Because we do that in reading. I mean, mm -hmm. we put them at a reading level, we teach them at that reading level, what would be right. any different in putting that in standard form in the sense of saying this is what they're going to reach, this is their growth window. Mm -hmm. Without excuses, like as a teacher, I'm not gonna make excuse. He has a hard life, so I'm not gonna like push him. So for me, I see it differently, like yeah, I'm, I'm not okay. gonna make an excuse. Okay. He can't make an excuse. I'm not gonna let that kid say I've had a bad day or my mom says something okay. does that. Yeah. So I see it that way. Like every kid, no matter what, without any excuses, will grow. Second and third grade level, coming into fifth grade. So say I was a super teacher. Let's just say I was a super teacher. You are. And, and I got them to grow, but not grow so far to leave me on fifth grade level. Because they're coming in so low, mm -hmm. second and third grade level, I might get them to grow, but it may only get them to fourth grade. So it does need to be their full potential. Because if a child coming in the second grade reading level and he leaves me on fourth grade, that's a lot of growth. He may not leave me on the grade level, on fifth grade level, but there's a lot of growth. So it does need to be something in there with the child's full potential. Because that looks different for every kid in the school. So the next thing I want to show you guys um, also is the data piece, where we can look at some of the data that we have. And it's going to show you um, 2015-2016, grades three, four, the, um, the growth that has been made or hasn't been made. And why don't you guys talk about it while I pull up my um, 
infographic for a little bit more. There's a, just a couple pages. The next page you'll see is broken down between um, the standards for MAP and ELA. And this is, again, for this one's for 2016. And then the next one is also pulled up for um, subgroups that were tested at our site. And you can see some of that. And I want you to come up with some things like talk it as your group right now. Um, what stands out? What do you notice? Okay. And I'll be right back. There has to be some preparation for the test. So like the school I came from in Oklahoma, we started talking about the test from day one, day like one. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily with the kids and not pressuring and right. both set up goals. And we can just go through this portion here and then the next portion. That's a great segue, <laughs> Ms. Darling. So um, I want to show a video and we saw it in our staff meeting and this video it's all about hopes and dreams of this school. And I want you to write down a hope as that you want to see from this group for the school community, and then a hope of your own that you want to see out of this. Okay? So you're going to have two hopes. Mr. Gallagher, I have some little post-it notes there. And you yeah, can write them on the post-it post notes. <clears throat> okay? So it's yeah. about three minutes, and then we're going to kind of wrap it up. Ms. Darling. Um. I hope that um, this actually happens. And when I say this, I mean what we're attempting to do, what you are attempting to do, your vision, because it is it is so discouraging when you put your hope onto the airplane and then the plane never gets off the ground. 